lot of modern mountain bikes today, especially the mid to higher end ones, will come with tubes in the tires, but they will include tire sealant, such as this WTB sealant, and also valve stems so that you can convert the tires to tubeless very easily. That's something that I recommend doing because it not only gives the bike a better ride quality, but it allows you to seal punctures in the tire while you're riding so you don't have to repair the tire on the trail. Most of the time, the sealant is going to be able to seal those punctures. I've made a video before of how to convert tires to tubeless. This one's gonna be really straightforward, really simple, of how to take a stock tire and pull out the tubes, put in new valve stems, put in the sealant, and get you up and riding quickly. So let's get started. This tire on the mountain bike that I just got has tubes inside, so I'm gonna show you how to pull those tubes out first, and then we'll make the conversion. We're just gonna pull the cap off the valve stem, undo this little ring here, and then we're gonna let all the air out. Squeeze the tire as you do, and you can kind of push it down to the ground. So I'm just pushing on this Presta valve to let the air out. Then what we wanna do is push with our thumbs, and we're gonna push the tire bead into the middle of the rim and then hold it with one side and then just go around the tire and then we're going to take a tire lever and we're just going to pull it off and then you can take a second tire lever and get the bead to where it'll just come all the way off and then you can kind of push the tire lever over to the side sometimes you can get it with your fingers and we're just going to work that bead off now you only have to undo one side because we're just going to pull the tube out now that I've got that out, you're gonna start at the valve stem. I'm gonna push the valve stem up with my fingers and get it out of the hole completely. And then I'm just gonna pull the tube out. All right, now we're ready to put in a new valve stem that came with the bike. Now I'm gonna insert the new valve stem into the hole. And this one is a race face, and I'll show you it has a couple pieces to it, but you just take the valve stem by itself, place it in, and then you're either gonna have just a lock ring or this particular one has a plastic piece that goes on. It's got some material so that the, there's more material on one side versus the other. And this race face is a little off center, this race face rim. So uh, like I said, sometimes all you'll have is just a lock ring. This one has that plastic piece. And then I put on an O-ring and then it's got the metal lock ring just going to screw that on. So it just depends on what kind came with the bike that you have. So again, plastic piece, O-ring, and then the lock ring for this one. And make sure the valve stem is centered because uh, if you have this style that has the plastic piece, it'll, you'll want to put the extra material on one side to keep the valve stem uh, you know, straight up and down. So the lock ring does not have to be like insanely tight. You can actually damage the valve stem. You could pull the valve stem through the rubber that's on the other side so you don't want to do that you just want to put it you know snug but not crazy tight it's time to add our tire sealant in this case i have a bottle of this wtb sealant about half the bottle is two of these scoops in a larger mountain bike tire like this one which is a 2.4 or 2.5 i do two scoops which again is about half the bottle sometimes you'll get a little bottle like this and if that's the case and you have just two bottles included, then you're going to put one bottle in each tire. It's easier if you hang the tire up. So I've got the one bead off the tire, as you can see, and that allows me to pour the sealant in. So valve stem installed, ready to put in the sealant. Hang the tire up if you can, because it makes this job easier. Before I put the sealant in, I'm going to shake it up. Now, if you just have one bottle, then you could just add the whole bottle without really shaking it up. But if you're just adding, I think this is going to hold uh, pretty much the rest of this bottle. So I'm going to do two scoops. If I have any left over, then I'll just save some. So I do have a little bit left over. So I did two scoops. Uh, this bottle has some measuring on the side, but uh, again, I usually do two of those one ounce scoops in each tire for a mountain bike. Now it's time to work the bead onto the rim. And then I'm just going to start at the top. You're going to probably have to hold one side with your thumb. If you let go, it can pop off most likely. And then sometimes what I'll do is now that I've got this side on, I'll rotate it so that the sealant goes to the bottom. That way I don't spill any out. You will most likely spill when you do this. Just sometimes some will just come out. So you can see it's kind of popping off the, the rim when I do this. So what I'm going to do is just hold the other side with my thumb and work this side on. Oftentimes today, what I've noticed is tires fit really well. 
you may have to use a tire lever at the very end and this one i mean i can just pop it on my thumb very easily but if you have to use a tire lever you're just going to insert it insert it underneath the the tire and the rim and just put it on again that one i could have done with my thumb and it's harder with gravel tires those are tighter usually mountain bike tires especially higher end ones like maxis and schwalbe they'll just go on a rim pretty easily but you may have to use a tire lever now it's time just to add air here's a tip for you if the tire was really tight going onto the rim, you may need some soap. So what I do is I put some dishwashing liquid in a spray bottle, shake it up, and then you just spray it between the rim and the tire. I've already done one of these tires. I don't have to do that. So what I recommend doing is trying it without the soap first. If it goes on and the tire is even, so it's not kind of like dipping down inside the rim, um, you can see the seam. There's a little seam. If the seam is all the way even and then you spin the tire, and the tire is not wobbling back and forth, that means it went on straight and you're good to go. Uh, if, if it did not go on all the way, what you can do is you can add extra air. I wouldn't recommend going above like 50 PSI. If you go up to 50 PSI and the tire is still not coming up all the way, in other words, that seam dips down inside the rim, then you're gonna have to use soap. And what you can do is let out the air, just put the soap where that tire is kind of down inside the rim and not coming out, and then add the air, go up to 50 PSI, maybe 60 at the most. Don't go more than that on a mountain bike tire. And then usually with the soap, it'll pop it out. Here's another tip. Make sure the tire comes over that little rubber piece of the valve stem. You can see here that it kind of caught. So you just want to kind of work it over there. Just push it down and make sure that valve stem is so that the, you know, the tire beads are around the valve stem. Otherwise, <laughs> the air won't go in the tire. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a floor pump for this. I think I can do it with a floor pump. If not, then you may have to use an air compressor and you would have to use a little adapter like this. So you would just screw this onto the valve stem and then, uh, you know, hit it with an air compressor and that will pop the tire out really easily. Most of the time today, you can use a floor pump. Not always guaranteed, but we're going to try it. I'm going to unscrew the little metal tip there on the Presta valve. That allows air to go in. And let's try this with a floor pump, see if it works. It is working. And you're going to hear a pop, maybe two, maybe three, as the tire pops onto the rim. That's totally normal. Here's a little tip. If you've got one of these valve stems that go in off center, so this race face rim, you know, the valve stem is not perfectly in the middle of the rim. You really got to make sure this plastic wedge is in place and holding the valve stem right in the middle. This one was leaking and I realized that little plastic piece was not set just right. And so now that I got it set it right, it's fine. So again, plastic piece, O-ring, and then this little metal ring that locks it on. But that's pretty crucial for these off-center rims uh, if, if you got that little plastic wedge included. Put on the valve cap. And this tire did not pop. Usually you'll get a popping noise when these things go on but um, this one did not. So this tire went on very straight without needing soap. This little seam should be even all the way around the rim. Like I mentioned earlier, if that seam dips down inside the tire, the tire is gonna wobble, and that means you need to use soap. But this one went on just fine, so that seam is perfectly even all the way around the tire. So that is how you take your mountain bike and convert the tires to tubeless, assuming the bike came with tire sealant and with a valve stem. Keep your tubes. Roll them up, put them in your hip pack or your hydration pack for your rides, just in case you get a puncture where the sealant doesn't seal, then you have to put in a tube. So in that case, you would take out that valve stem, put the tube back in to get you back to the car, get you back to your house. That will wrap it up for this video. If it was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. That helps the YouTube algorithm and leads people to videos like this compared to useless videos of people doing weird dance moves. Everyone needs to be on a mountain bike and know how to work on it. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.